Welcome to the Moms I Know with Sheila Walsh Denson and Maria Anderson Farnham. Two moms on a mission to reclaim childhood and take you from surviving to thriving on your parenting journey. Hi, this is Sheila. And this is Maria. And we want to welcome you to the Moms I Know. Today, we are talking about home. And as you know, home is where the heart is. Today, I came to Maria's house and I was super surprised as I walked in the door, there was a whole row of boxes. I don't know how many high and how, mm-hmm. how long, but it was, it was massive. There, there are things moving here. There, there's a big shift going on in Maria's home because her and her husband are packing up and it is just so, so rich right now because Maria is going through a major shift in moving homes. And so we just thought so much happens in homes. So Maria, the big question of the hour is where are you moving to? Oh, we are off to the wilds of Montana. So this topic is so poignant right now because I have been so invested in home and, you know, SoCal Essentials is, you know, health, home, family, and lifelong learning, and I have worked so hard at creating a home, and so now to be shifting that, hopefully we'll get through this podcast without a lot of tears, but it's an emotional time right now. I bet because you built this home. Mm -hmm. We built it with our own hands. We designed it. Uh, It's a non-toxic home, and every single room, every single wall, every single cupboard, it, it was fashioned by us. And so we're not selling it. <laughs> we're, we're going to be coming and going. We have children and grandchildren here in California, and we also have children and grandchildren in Montana. And so we want to be able to have um, a base in both worlds, but also create home in both. And so this has been such a huge part of our life. This is the home where our daughter got married. This is the home where the, the, the children were young, and this is the home that there have been graduations and birthdays and so many celebrations here. And so it's, it is truly bittersweet. But when we were talking about this topic, there's so many aspects of home that come into play. And so, you know, you can create a home in a tent in the wilderness. You can create a home wherever you are. You can create a home in an apartment, you can create a home in a flimsy shack somewhere, and so what really does constitute home? Right, and like I said, food. (laughs) I think constitutes a home, and and gathering around the table constitutes a home. There are so many factors in choosing a home that should not be really overlooked. Sometimes we assume that anything will work or any, anything will be. But I really believe that to make it a home, you have to be invested. Right. And so again, we come back to that, you know, parenting with intention. So creating a home with intention. So for me, regardless of the size of the home, the place of the home, and now as we're shifting, you know, to a new home, what, what, does, what, what does make a home? And so obviously, for me, it's important for it to be as beautiful as possible. Uh, I need nature around me. I've lived in cities, I've lived in small apartments, I've lived in small homes out in the wilderness, and I've been thinking about this a lot too in terms of that, and then also for for my children as we're starting to make this shift. They're seeing us changing and growing and also being flexible, and so I think that especially nowadays with people having so much mobility, we have to have that flexibility, and yet we also, as women, I think there is this instinctive wanting to have a heart, wanting to have a home. And I know that men feel this as well. And so maybe it's as parents to have that place to bring our infants to, to bring our children up in. And so making it as cozy as possible, making it as warm and uh, familiar as possible. So, you know, our new home will have all of our furnishings, all of our paintings, all of our kitchen gadgets, all of the things that our children have grown up with. So there will be that familiarity. But it's also, it's so much more about just, you know, our quote in the beginning, home is where the heart is. The people are what make the home. And so as long as we are bringing that love 
that affection, that camaraderie, and then I guess it does come back to the, the rituals, the things that make our family our family. The meals are huge, and it's interesting because just the other day we have an outside arbor, and it's a place where we've had many, many meals outside, and I was saying to my daughter, you know, that's going to be some place that I'm going to miss so much, and she said, well, Mama, we can create that feeling again in our, in, you know, in the new place, and we can create it wherever we go, and so it's just one of those things where, you know, a, a tablecloth can make it be homey. It's that familiar, we have the red and white checked with little hearts on it, tablecloth. That will transfer to different places. We've had picnics on that. That makes it a home when it's out in the wilderness. The candle that's lit. Uh, um, we went to our new home a couple of weeks ago. We were only there for a week, but we lit candles at the dinner table with the tablecloth on the, the new table outside. We got flowers, you know, picked a little bouquet of wildflowers and put it in a vase on the table. That made it home. The boxes weren't all unpacked yet. Although I have to say, my husband, we've moved so many times in our relationship. And usually within 24 hours, he has unpacked every box <laughs> and things are set up. So we, he, he's kind of like the instant home mm -hmm. builder, the mover. So this one feels a bit different because we're moving several states away. And so and we're going to be continuing to have a home here as well. So we're kind of splitting our home, we're dividing our home, and that feels a little bit strange. It's such an experience that I've never experienced. You know, I went from my parents' home, which my parents are still in the home I grew up in. They've lived there for over 45 years, and then went to college, and then moved um, to San Francisco, and then down to Santa Cruz. And we've been in our house for almost 20 years now, and it's, um, it was not my, my, it was our starter house. But as you know, if you live in the Bay Area, your start a house becomes your forever house, mm -hmm. which I've had a little bit of resentment towards, you know, here and there. But then realizing it's the home, it's the beauty of the home where it's where two of my children were born. Mm -hmm. You know, I had one daughter born in the front room and the other daughter born in the bedroom. And so that is forever special to mm -hmm. us and it's very special to the children. And I realized that, um, it's kind of funny, is this is the, the pros of, of the small house is that we are in each other's business, the, the good, the bad, the ugly, and it's really nice right now during, um, I have two children in high school, where we're close by default, and it's okay. You know, I don't necessarily have to ask them the questions because I see, <laughs> I'm, I'm hearing, I'm seeing, and, and they know where they can get their privacy, which, which is fine, but it's, there is an intimacy in our home that I think would be missed if we had a huge home. You know, I had a friend who, had a small home and she moved into that the big home and you miss that she said they go upstairs now and close their doors and so I've never really had to experience that we're just all on top of each other and, and that works as well but one thing I am grateful for so well, there's a lot I'm grateful for of course but in, in when we're talking about homes it, is that I feel like my husband and I we have given our children roots mm -hmm. we have given them a hometown we have given them a place where they, they can always come back to and be familiar with. And I think that is very, um, is a gift in itself. And I feel, I'm very grateful that my parents have that, that when I go to my parents' house and show my children where I grew up and, and where I explored as a little, as a child, um, that is, um, that is beautiful. And so I'm hoping that our children will, um, will, will see that, you know, and, and it's been a sacrifice to be in a sense in a small house, um, and being, um, I've been lucky to be able to be a stay-at-home mom to, to foster the home with making it beautiful and, and um, making it count. Oh, that is so important, giving them roots. And we have done that. And my my mom still lives in the house that we grew up in, too. And I've always had that feeling. And when, when I was younger, you know, they'd talk about moving. And I'd say, no, you can't do that. What about this? What about that? And, you know, hanging on to these things. And I think that is so important. And I remember when my grandmother passed away and her home was sold, and that was a home that I spent so much time in. And so we have these passages of time. And I've also had friends that moved every year. And I kind of admired that too. And it was like, well, that, that's so fun. And so how do we make sense of, of whether we can be in those family homes forever or when we have to be moving and being somebody who has had that sense of place my entire life, I have to admit, it's daunting right now, and it's a little bit overwhelming, but I'm also excited, and so that coming into that flexibility, and also 
we created that for our children, and they've chosen not to come home to mm -hmm. Santa Cruz. Wow, that's and that's huge. another big one. And we were talking also about you know as the as the nest empties, and so you know for for those of you with small children, you know this is years away. For those of you with teenage children, it's not so far, and then off they go, and they start to create a home of their own. We're at this time of year when a lot of people are saying goodbye to their children as they head off to college or for adventures and so there's this whole empty nest thing and then you know now we're packing up our home and it's interesting watching as people walk in they're like what you're moving you know because our home we've been here for 27 years and so talk about stuff too so we're really working on that simplicity model right now and just i, I thought i'd gotten rid of a lot of things but now the idea of packing them up is, is a, still streamlining more but as we let our children go off into the world and they choose not to come home to the nest or you know they've got those roots but we've given them also wings to to travel so like i said one of our children is staying in california two are settling in montana and so you know we're just going to try to bounce back and forth between them and wanting our children to have that sense of stability that sense of place that sense of home but then also being okay when things change and i think of, you know right now we have such a, a refugee challenge globally and so I, I think about these families that are being uprooted and how do they create them a sense of home for their family how do they get that security so I want to bring it back to even just you know whether it's a small home a large home how do we create that togetherness and Sheila you were really talking about that like when we're all together in a small home and the, the familiarity and we're in each other's business and we've always like I said lived in a small home too and yet we can create a little bit of a sense of space for each of the children. They can have their own areas or they can sometimes have their own room or if they share a room. My sister and I shared a room and I remember we always you know, had her side and my side, but then there was, of course, the door was on her side and the closet was on my side. And so, you know, coming up with how can we share spaces but also create our own privacy and our own areas. I, I always went outside and I had a little place of my own out in the yard. And so just this whole question of what really makes a home and again it's the people that are there and then what you do within that space and how you create those patterns those rhythms where no matter where you are and i know we've talked in another episode about that rhythm in the evening and i remember one time camping you know home was the car or the tent and yet we had those same patterns we would have the same types of things that we did every single day and some people have morning rituals some people have evening rituals and so some people have both and so you take those with you no matter where you are and you make the best of it so while i'm somebody who really advocates for making home as special as possible as cozy as possible now i'm being faced with this now how do you make it portable as well yeah, and it's interesting as you were talking about the empty nest right now as we speak. My oldest niece is heading on an airplane to New York to oh. with my sister and my brother-in-law. You know, they're going to they're gonna be dropping her off, and, and it's just, it's a new normal. And so, like you, it will be a new normal, a new chapter, and I think it's a gift in itself. You know, of course, it's like that you are able to have um, the ability, the resources to be with your grandchildren in two different states. You know, that that's um, amazing, and I think... You know, when you really break it down, it's home is, is where the family is. Mm -hmm. home, home is like New York, you said, home is where the heart is. And it's, yeah, it's whether it's your chosen family or your, your, your given family, it's just home is where you feel comfortable and, and, and the best. And, you know, I wish, there's a part of me that does want to move <laughs> to, to experience, I, you know, I want that experience of, of kind of shedding a skin uh -huh. because our home has become kind of our second skin. And, and, um, and, I, and I think we will have to wait till our children are out of high school and until we do move. But I, I'm looking forward to that, you know, so that um, experience that because we have still way too much stuff that is just accumulating. We have not moved. Right, yeah, it it does. It really accumulates. Um, I'm thinking about this in terms of that sort of the stages of our lives and we talked recently about the seasons of our lives and i'm coming up on a fairly significant birthday here and and kind of looking at that in terms of what does that mean for the rest of my life and i had heard a quote one time about as we approach middle age we have to allow ourselves to have a second adolescence so that we don't really age <laughs> and one of the things that i'm finding is this sense of excitement with this next 
chapter with the unknowns, with new friends, with new places, new grocery stores, new downtown, new house, which is, you know, very quirky and funny, but all of these adventures. And I'm finding that it's really bringing in this newfound sense of youthfulness and adventure that hasn't really been in my life as much. I see uh, it. I, I totally <laughs> see it. I mean, you're very smiley and you're very, there's an, there's a euphoria, you know, yeah. that, that just an excitement that I see when I, when I come in and I see all the boxes and it's like, mm -hmm. there's movement, you know, it's there's, movement. It's there's, change. It's change. And, and, and geez, what's it going to, what's, you're, you're, you know, un unfolding here. It's right. going to be really beautiful. And, and as you said, bittersweet, because it's, this is the home that you built with your two, with your four hands. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, the kids help right. too. Right. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. Ten hands, actually. And then your know, grandchildren have even left their little marks along the way. So, but just in terms of, you know, how we handle the different stages of our lives and how we help our children see us adapt and change. And I think our children are all dealing with this in different ways as well. Oh, yeah. So what are they, what are they well, saying? Are I they... think they're, they're kind of a little disbelieving, and they each have their own thoughts about it. Right. And so there's excitement for us. There's happiness for us. And there's also, you know, what they're gaining, what they're losing, the shift that happens. And so but it's a, it comes back to that dance. But it's so, so interesting because, you know, we've worked so hard at raising our children, and now all of a sudden there is a little bit of this, well, now, what about us now? And what are the things that we're going to be able to experience? One of them is, we're going to be living where it snows. I'm going to get to be skiing again. And, and so this whole idea of sort of a second adolescence, although I'll be skiing a lot more carefully than I was doing. <laughs> so, but just being able to create a new home and with new adventures, and the children will come to the new home, and the grandchildren will come to the new home. And that's another thing is thinking about the grandchildren, because the grandchildren have known us here in this house. And so they're even looking at how is this shift going to feel. And so the, there's no one right answer. It, it just flows, and we have to look at how do we approach each thing that comes our way, whether we're moving by choice, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling very blessed that we have these choices, whether we move by circumstance with natural disasters or economic or political things that come up, and whether we have to make a new life. And, and all of our grandparents, you know, we come from immigrants mm -hmm. that came to this country by choice, but also because of situations. Mm -hmm. And people have made these choices and then made a life. They've made a home in a new place. And so I think that it's very poignant right now that we're looking at this full circle in terms of how do we take our lives, leave a country, come to another country, or leave a state, go to another state, and, and what is it? It's our story. It's our story. It's our story. And that's where, you know, Maria and I are here with the moms I know trying to um, help you define your story, help you write your story, help you tell your story to other moms you know so that we know that we are, we are in this together. Right. So next time we'll be we'll be well, actually yeah we'll be talking from two different places. Possibly. I'll be here in Santa Cruz and you'll be in Montana. Yeah. And the moms I know will continue to grow and and all we'll be coming and going as right. well. So yeah. there will be episodes together, episodes apart, and we'll be bringing in lots more guest speakers. So yeah. it's an exciting time. We're excited to have you with us here on this journey, and we'll keep you posted. All right. So thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on the Moms, moms I Know. Thanks for joining us today for The Moms I Know. To learn more about Sheila and her online program, The Mom Map, visit purplebeatnutrition.com. For Maria's monthly blog and to learn more about her group program and retreat, visit soquelessentials.com. That's S-O-Q-U-E-L essentials.com. We hope you enjoyed today's episode of The Moms I Know. Until next week, have a joyful family journey.